Welcome everybody. Today we're going to do something a little different. I'm going to teach you how to play Monopoly Prism. I'm curious about the game. I bought a lot of the boosters, but I haven't played the game yet. I'm not a Monopoly fan, but I do love board games, so maybe it'll hold up great. Stick around to the end of the video though, because I'm going to give away everything you see here. I just want to pass it on to someone who might really enjoy it. So the game and all of my boosters go to somebody in the comments. Welcome everybody to the wonderful world of Prism Monopoly. It's similar to Monopoly, but with millionaires as your players, and you're trying to get as many points as possible. To set up Prism Monopoly, you're going to place the game board down, of course. In the middle, you're going to place the Playmaker cards and the All-Star Contest cards. You're going to take your colored ball and put it on the go. Then you're going to collect the games and place them in their corresponding game locations. You are going to then give each player five 10 points and five 50 points. Whoever has the most points at the end of the game is the winner. The game ends instantly when the last All-Star Contest card has been drawn. Once all the setup is done, it is now time to compile your team of millionaires to take on another team of millionaires in brutal Monopoly fashion. This game comes with both some starter cards and some prism cards. If you look at the prism cards, the here we have uh, KD, Kevin Durant. He's a 94 overall with his prism card and a 84 with his starter card. I suggest you kind of mix and match, makes the game a little more interesting. If you use all prism cards, a lot of these locations and different items are gonna become really simple and you're gonna find yourself succeeding a lot of the time. To assemble your team, you're going to draft them in a snake draft. If you're not familiar with that, I'll show you what that is right now. So you're going to roll the dice. Whoever has the highest roll is the number one pick. So they are going to go down and select whatever player they would like. The second player with them would do the same. The third player does the same. The fourth player does the same, but they get two selections. And then it goes back up in reverse order. So third player will get a pick. Second player will get a pick. Then first player again gets to pick. But then again, they pick two players until you have a full roster of three starters and one reserve. On your turn, you're gonna roll the dice and move your icon around the board. Each board location is a little bit different. If you land on a game location that is not owned by another player, you have the option to purchase that, but you have to do it, you have to at least try. So you, what you do is you read the card, simple as that. To take control of this, you must have one starter with a defensive stat of 76 or higher, then pay 10 points. This game says a ton of times in the rule book, you are not allowed to flip over your card to look at your player's stats. You can't do it. It's unfair, it's illegal. No looking at your player's stats, which is weird because you learn all your player stats really quickly. So let's say I had a little Zach Levine card and I wanna see if I have a defensive stat of 76 or higher. We look at Zach Levine, his defense 85, good for you, Zach Levine. So you would then pay 10 points and you would receive the game location. You are now the owner of this location. If another player on a subsequent turn then lands on your location, it's like a player going to an NBA game, but then you stop them at the door and ask them for money and they say no, and then you say, I'll play you for it. That's what happens here. So each player is gonna flip over their reserve and whatever reserves player rating is higher wins. If the owner of this card wins they get ten dollars from the other player if the player that does not own that location wins they don't have to pay anything if you ever own both colors of a location whatever payment is doubled in this location it is 10 points if you own both that is 20 points another location on the board here is called a trade location with a trade location you can trade one of your players from your team to another team and the other team has no say they must just complete the trade. You bully them into trading a player and they have to do it. 
The other option is also if there is extra cards up on the draft board, you can trade your card with one of those cards. Wherever the player comes from, whether a starter or a reserve, the new player has to go back in that location. If you land on the team bus location, you get to move to any location on the board in between the next team bus stop. So you get to just place your guy there. Pretty simple. With the Playmaker location, you're going to draw a card from the Playmaker deck and just do what the steps say. This one says, choose one starter to compete. Keep the cards in front of you. Do not look at their stats. Do not look at their stats. Flip over the cho chosen card. If your skill stat versus their defensive stat, the higher stat wins. So let's say we got De'Aaron Fox and they have Kevin Durant. So our skill stat... On De'Aaron Fox, our skill is 89 versus their defensive stat. His defense is 93. Uh-oh. KD, shut him down. The winner steal any one game from the loser. So if in a previous turn you have earned a game and you lose that competition, the other player may now steal that away from you. If you get to just visiting the timeout selection, you get to... Just visit the timeout selection. Free parking, on the other hand, allows you to stop at free parking. If you are a bad boy and you need some punishment, you can go to the timeout location and then you go to timeout. You sit in the corner like a naughty, naughty boy. In order to get out of timeout, there are three ways to do it. You can pay 10 points and get out immediately on your next turn. You can play a card from the Playmaker deck that allows you to get out, or you can roll the dice. If you roll a six, you automatically get out. If not, you lose your turn. On your third turn of trying to roll a six, you get out automatically and take whatever dice you have rolled. Once you get to go, even if I am on the NBA Finals and I roll a four, I must stop at go. When you stop at go, you are going to flip over an all-star contest. You're going to automatically collect 40 points from the bank. And then you are going to do whatever it says on the all-star contest. You place one starter face up on each of rounds one, two, and three spaces. Do not look at the stats. For each of the flipped cards, the higher offensive stat wins. So an opponent, so in this case, challenge the opponent to your left. Whoever wins that... They are going to keep this card. It is a value of 20. Each of the All-Star Game contests have a different value. And again, these are points for you at the end of the game. Once the very last All-Star Contest card has been taken, the game ends immediately and every player calculates their score both in tokens that they have, in locations that they have, and in All-Star Contests that they have and the higher point wins that's it whoever has the highest wins this game is okay <laughs> it's okay i like it better than regular monopoly which i don't really like this has a little bit more agency but still it's not that fun of a game so there you have it monopoly prism it wasn't for me but maybe it is for you so i'm going to give all this away the way you get this is you have to be a subscriber you have to like and then down in the comments tell me which player you wish was in this set and that's it, and I'll send it all out to you for free. Thank you guys for watching, and hey, we're going to catch you next time.